it really takes a village to raise a child and it's supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be a one person job. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and I'm a birth and postpartum doula. I bring content on postpartum care, labor and delivery, being a doula, motherhood, and all fun things in between. So welcome to my channel and I'd love for you guys to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on if you enjoy this video. I wanna say that you don't have to read every baby book in the world to know what to expect in this postpartum period. I know it's really overwhelming to be given so many options, so many things to do, ways to prepare. Instinctively, we know how to take care of our newborns. Sometimes we may need a helping hand and that's okay. Sometimes we may need a little guidance. Sometimes we may need somebody to make us a dinner. Like that's, that's okay. So just know that throughout your postpartum period, you always know best and your instincts are going to kick in if they haven't already and you are gonna do awesome. Today I'm bringing to you 10 ways to prepare for postpartum and this is a mix of research that I've done as a postpartum doula, a mix of my own experience as a mother, and also things that I wish I knew or wish that I did for my postpartum period. Even with a 20 month old daughter, I feel like there are still things that I'm kind of putting back together after having her. and. It's all positive, it's a lot of growth, but at the same time, it's challenging. I decided to make this little video for you. If you are newly postpartum or if you are pregnant, um, I hope that this helps and I hope that it gives you a little bit of insight of what's to come. So the first way to prepare for postpartum is making yourself a little care station and this can be in your bathroom if you have space or it can just be a little basket in your bedroom that you take on into the bathroom but this can include postpartum pads, the spray bottle which you'll actually get from the hospital if you haven't delivered your baby yet, any essential oils that you like to freshen up with, something for your face or um, just like lotion, anything that wouldn't typically be in the bathroom I would say. This little care prep can help you get to the bathroom and kind of freshen up when you have a few minutes without the baby and it's beneficial because it keeps you feeling good throughout the day it allows you to get cleaned and sanitized and change your pads really easily without feeling like you're stressed out and looking for all of your favorite things around the house the second tip and probably my favorite that I wish I did while I was pregnant was creating a nook so this is your spot to breastfeed snack hang out watch TV read a book it's your space and this could be separate from your bedroom if you'd like it to be, depending on how your house is set up. But this is your spot. And this is your spot alone and with baby. So having some snacks there, um, having a water bottle that's full there at all times, having a book, your Bible, anything that's going to keep you basically grounded during this time, having one thing there that you can reach out for, um, especially once you get the hang of breastfeeding and you're able to have a spare hand, this is really great to have because then when you sit down to breastfeed, you have a snack there if you need a granola bar or you need something just to, to quickly eat while you have your baby on you. And this could be really simple, like just the remote and your headphones and a snack. So it's just really however many things you want to include in it. This is also your breastfeeding spot. You can keep nipple cream over there, birth cloths for the baby, wipes. So this is a great spot to have if you have some room um, wherever you're going to be setting up. And it is also great for your partner to know because if they see you sitting there breastfeeding but you don't have a little snack at your side, they can bring you over something to eat. It's just a good little thing to have um, between you and your partner as well. My third tip to you guys is a pretty obvious one, but it's meal prepping. And meal prepping, not so much in the stocking the freezer meal prep, which is the common sense part to it. Like a lot of people already meal prep, they already keep freezer meals. But a couple meals that are good to keep in your fridge are foods that you can just easily take out of the fridge. I actually heard this tip on a podcast called the Fourth Trimester Podcast, and I loved it. I wish that this was something that I would have done when I was postpartum, but she recommends Put a tray of deviled eggs in your refrigerator if you'd like deviled eggs. If not, you can find something that's like a deviled egg. But you put it in your refrigerator so anytime you're hungry but you don't have time to prep a meal or make something for yourself, you can just go in the fridge, grab a couple deviled eggs, and it'll hold you over until you can get that meal that you want. So I think that's like a genius idea, especially when you want a snack that will be a little bit more filling than just your average chips or pretzels. 
this is a really great way to get something really healthy in your body. This is a really great way for you to stay nourished throughout the day. A postpartum food that I recommend is soup because you can make a huge batch of this and it's very easy and then have it for a few days. And that's something that you can easily keep in your refrigerator instead of having to defrost it. So this next tip is from my experience. I recommend getting the baby station set up as well. So this would be um, where you change their diaper for the most part. Their poops spray, they really spray. So when you go to lift those legs up, whatever is in that danger zone is probably gonna get sprayed with poop or urine, depending on your baby. So that is something that I have had a lot of experience with with Lila, and I recommend keeping some towels in that area, some spray to clean up, some carpet cleaner. Like those are things that can totally go in those drawers that they have under their changing table or close in their room that you can kind of just grab and clean with because it's real. And especially if you're home alone or if your partner's working from home, if you wanna be prepared for that, that is something I definitely recommend. Storage in the baby's room. I actually didn't have a lot of storage boxes for Lila's clothes when she was first born, and I wish that I did because right now we have about 100 boxes that have random clothes in it throughout her growing up. So getting those storage boxes together, or storage bins rather, will really help with kind of clearing out their room as they grow through their clothes. Depending on the size that your baby is when they're born, they may be bigger than expected, so there may be a lot of small clothes that will never fit your baby. So putting them away in storage if you want to keep them for the next child or if you're going to donate them to somebody, um, having somewhere to put them can help kind of just declutter the area. I think there was a smudge on the camera this whole time, so that's good. So this next tip is to have that open talk with your partner. My socks off. This talk can be about even food prepping. If they're going to food prep for you and make you breakfast every morning so when you wake up you have something to eat, things like that. Um, intimacy is a huge one. Knowing what to expect when you can't necessarily be intimate. Scheduling that time for intimacy is huge. And not intimacy as in, you know, but massages, things where you're just hanging out together and really spending a genuine moment with each other can really help the relationship go through a postpartum period. And also having a, an idea of when your partner is going back to work, what that may look like, um, just kind of going into it with an idea of what to expect. And if this doesn't play out the way that you guys think it's going to, that's okay, but at least you'll have talked about it before you have the baby. Or um, if this is happening after you already have your child, that's okay too. You can always just kind of make a game plan of what you're feeling and what you'd like to feel and kind of vice versa and really just be open with each other during this period. Another tip that I have is to think of where you're going to be most of the time and this can be kind of like living room bedroom situation or a family room bedroom and I found it really helpful when Lila was small to have a bassinet in the main room of the house because that's where I was most of the time. I didn't want to be tied to the bedroom so keeping a bassinet in the living room helped because when somebody was in the living room and I was in the kitchen they kept their eye on her. If I was folding or hanging out in the living room I felt good because I kind of just put Lila down in her bassinet and she slept with the family noise going on she didn't really need to be sleeping in the bedroom all the time it just helped the transition um, I didn't have to like bring something into the living room every time I had her come in the living room with me so that was very helpful I recommend diving into a form of entertainment while you're in your postpartum period because there's gonna be a lot of late night breastfeeds, a lot of times where you're sitting and folding clothes or you're gonna be walking around the house with the baby and I feel like diving into a podcast or a show that you really wanna get into but can't find the time for is a great way to get a little bit of adventure throughout the day because those first few weeks you're gonna be bonding hardcore with your baby. Having that little sense of entertainment while you're not surrounded by a lot of people can help just with the whole transition. I just, I have some shows in my head that bring me right back to the time when Lila was born and I honestly love that memory. Another tip for the postpartum period is diving into some virtual support online. And the time that we're in right now, virtual support is very popular. So if you dive into Facebook groups with new moms or if you need postpartum doula support, that's through online. There are a lot of resources out there and I highly recommend checking out just kind of what people are going through and how people are best connecting because those are a thing now and they're very beneficial. 
last but not least, um, the last thing I would like to talk about with preparing for postpartum is to not have any expectations. This is brand new and even if you've had a child before, every postpartum period is different. Those first months really set the tone for the next few years and even as in some Eastern cultures say, the next 40 years. So this fourth trimester is very important and I find that we really know what's best for us inside but sometimes it's hard to do that for ourselves or communicate with somebody else to help us. It's okay to need help during this time and it's okay to plan to need help. It really takes a village to raise a child and it's supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be a one person job. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. And if you guys ever have any questions, please email me or send me a DM on Instagram. Leave me a comment down below. Anything that you need, um, I'm here for you guys. That's all I have for you guys today, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.